Today on Follow the Compass North, we're going to be expanding upon our fire building skill sets by digging back into the fire piston kit and using flint and steel today. I've been carrying these two together, it makes it very easy for me because they use a lot of the same tinders. Uh, I have my jute from the fire piston episode, we'll go over that here shortly. I have a lot more charred cotton and with this we will need it. Uh, and then I have the fire piston itself. If you're interested in how this works, go check out the video we posted six days ago. Right here we have our actual flint and steel. And we shouldn't need anything else left in that kit. Our two types of tinder and our flint and steel. Now a common misconception with flint and steel is that when people are using ferrule rods or metal matches is that that is a form of flint and steel and it's not. Ferrocerium is a completely different substance. If you're interested in that or the sparking uh, implements that they have in modern lighters, go check out our ferrocerium episode. This is as historic as we can get, as old school as we can get, and we're uh, be using actual high carbon steel and flint to generate a spark. Now the downside with this. This is a uh, really neat, but it only generates a 350 to 400 degree spark, which sounds like a lot if you're cooking a pizza, but it is not a lot when you're trying to make a, a raging fire. Uh, as contrast, ferrocerium or the metal match that we commonly use is rocking around the 5,300 degree. I think it's 360, 5,360 degrees Fahrenheit approximately. So this, when we strike the flint with the steel, and we're going to be using nice glancing blows with this striker, uh, we're going to be generating some very, very fine sparks. It might be hard to see under this lighting. I might dim this down for our time-lapse portion to see if we can get some better views, of better angles of that spark. We'll be catching that very low temperature, relatively, spark in charred cotton. Charred cotton, as we explained in our fire piston episode, is uh, cotton that has been heated. It is the fuel, but it does not have oxygen, so it does not complete the fire triangle, and it just chars and turns into this beautiful uh, low ignition point tinder. Now, it's hard to start a fire with just charred cotton. You'll get flames, but they burn up pretty quickly. So we'll additionally be using some jute. Again, we've used this one in previous episodes. If you've not seen them before, this is basically just hemp that has been pulled apart. Hemp rope, hemp line, any craft store that has pure hemp, you should be set to go. Now I'm gonna prep this first. I'm gonna create a tiny little bird's nest about the size of what I'd assume a hummingbird or a small wren or a swallow would use. I like to elongate some sides of this because I'm going to put my ember in the middle, fold it over, twist this, and you have an air channel through and an area I can hold it where I'm not burning my fingers in the smoke. So I end up with this eyeball shaped, not eyeball, this would be eye socket, complete with lids and brows. Might be the wrong imagery to use for the video, but we're here, we're gonna use it. And we're gonna drop that tinder right in the middle of that little bird's nest. Probably a more accurate word for that, it's slipping my mind at the moment. I'm gonna line that with more charred cotton and that's going to catch the initial ember that I have here. Uh, that way if I only have a tiny little bit that has ignition I can break it off throw it in there and go from there. Now as I'm sparking this I will either hold this below or above the tinder. I've had more success with below and with these sharper pieces. I said tinder but below or above the flint uh, because the sparks are going to be glancing off in that way. Now what's happening here is you're not creating sparks from the flint. The flint is actually gouging this high carbon iron, this high carbon steel. Uh, if it had no carbon at all, it wouldn't be iron, it wouldn't be steel at all. It'd be iron. This high carbon steel here will have a glancing blow. It'll scrape along the flint. The flint is harder empirically. Now it may chip and shatter, but it is harder and it will gouge into here and ignite a small piece of iron that will fall into the, uh, the tinder here. 
However, this is not a one strike option. This isn't your classic, oh, two. Took two this time, not a good example. This isn't your one strike option or your two strike option. This is probably your 30 or 40 strike option. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this next part of the video, do some glancing glows and see if we can get an ember. And then I'll bring it back to normal speed for us to discuss the uh, combustion process. All right, we have ignition. All right, we have stable ignition. There we go. Clear out the excess and let it burn out. It's hard to explain what's going on while the fire is burning. Luckily, I took the time ahead of time to build the jute into my bird's nest. I had a little bit of trouble at the very beginning. I think my charred cotton's a little bit moist and dry it out for next time or rebake it when I do another batch. Uh, because the ember was not spreading as nicely as it usually does. Uh, I'm in a very humid weather right now and it tends to absorb that, that natural moisture. Apologize for the smoke there. More of a visual, I guess, than any other atrocity that uh, smoke <laughs> can give, uh, give to you on the census. So once I had this, uh, this bird's nest, I placed that little ember inside. I nursed it a little bit longer than I like to. I don't like to um, nurse that single ember, but it was uh, giving me some trouble. Once I dropped it into the middle and folded it over, that allows the heat to compound, to reflect upon itself, and you get this beautiful little coal that builds up. Now the best way to give this thing air would be to either shake it back and forth like this, or to put full arm swing circles out in the, uh, in the environment. Both of those are hard to film, so I went with a compromise of just blowing on the ember. Now, a good survivalist was probably, uh, many good survivalists were probably calling me out as I was doing that, like, don't blow on the tinder, what are you doing? Because your breath does have a lot of moisture in it, and I know, not the optimal way of doing things, but one of the easier ways to film this exact portion. If we're out in the wilderness together next time and you want me to show this where I swing it around and do it properly, uh, feel free to ask me. When we do some of the face-to-face -face videos here uh, in the upcoming months, you'll see me do that technique versus this cradling and blowing technique um, because of the excess moisture and because you have to breathe in sometimes. When you're swinging this around and providing constant aeration, or not aeration, constant air flow through this aerated tinder, you're going to have more success than if you're just blowing on the coal, even though it's a classic survival stereotype. Uh, we've burned out almost completely here, that's fine. Today was ignition, not the entire fire. Wanted to show a little bit about, uh, a little bit about um, actual flint and steel. Show you that it's a little bit harder uh, than using a ferrocerium rod, using a fire piston, using uh, match, lighter, or any of the other options that we have out there. But even though it's harder and a more rustic skill set to have, 
still one that I really enjoy. I just love that I can take a bit of steel, strike it against some sharp rocks, glance, get some glancing sparks off of this, and with my own skills and preparation, have my own fire. You're never going to run out of these two things. You're going to have a lot of hard times creating fires in wet conditions or where you don't have the proper tinder preparation uh, or if you're hypothermic. There's a lot of reasons where this isn't going to work. But if you're just recreationally building some skill sets and getting better at them, why not? It's a fun thing to get started with. If you have any questions, post them below. I always go through the comments and answer them. Any suggestions, comments, let us know. We like to have a two-way conversation in this, in this uh, channel, so please feel free to engage. Uh, if you like the video, like it. If you enjoyed it, share it, subscribe. Anything you do that helps the channel is greatly appreciated. So thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.